All right, so um, obviously we've got a really big weekend ahead of us. Uh, the Super Bowl Dog weekend is something that we've really been looking forward to for several weeks, and uh, it's just going to be a tremendous opportunity for our fans to come out this weekend and see two outstanding baseball teams play against each other. Uh, it's going to be a very competitive, um, high-intensity type of weekend here. Um, I'm excited as can be to be a part of it. I know our players are really looking forward to getting out there and playing in front of such a big crowd. Uh, the atmosphere is going to be incredible, and uh, we feel like we're playing really well right now. feel like we've got a lot of confidence as a team um, and just want to continue to build upon all the good things that we've done here the last couple of weeks and, and keep it rolling. And, and obviously, Kentucky is going to be an outstanding opponent this weekend. They are playing at an extremely high level. Um, th their head coach uh, is a former assistant coach that was here at Mississippi State. In his first year there, doing a tremendous job leading that team. Uh, so we're looking forward to the challenge of this weekend and, um, you know, ready to play a really good baseball team. We feel good about ourselves right now, so we're ready for the uh, for the challenge. With having to use so many arms this week, how does that affect the rotation this weekend? <laughs> sure. Um, Connor Pilkington, of course, will start tomorrow night. And then after that, the entire rest of the weekend is TBA. Mm -hmm. That is not to throw anybody off. We're not trying to hide anything, but it is what it is. Um, every single day that our team shows up to the field, it's all hands on deck every single day. Um, it's just a matter of who's feeling well, who didn't throw that many pitches the day before, who can give us what. I can't, even, I can't speak highly enough about how great our bullpen has been recently. Um, with just taking on this, this challenge that we have this year. Uh, our guys have been sensational out of the bullpen. They're pounding the strike zone. They're throwing their secondary stuff for called strikes. They're pitching with a lot of confidence. They really have truly embraced uh, what's going on here right now, just with the lack of depth in our staff. Um, those guys have taken the ball. They're throwing strikes. They're getting ahead in the count. They're limiting their number of pitches. Uh, we're getting guys in and out of the game. Um, just so we don't drop up their pitch count so they can be available for us the very next day or the following day. Um, can't speak highly enough about what our bullpen has done so far this year. Could Peyton come back on Sunday? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think so. I think Peyton's a guy that, um, you know, just has, has been a starting pitcher for us and has had an extended workload where he's pitched 70 to 80, 90 pitches at a time. Um, so I think, you know, he didn't throw nearly as many pitches the other night as he has as a starting pitcher here. So I think, you know, if we give him a few days, I think he could certainly bounce back maybe on Sunday and give us some type of extended outing either out of the bullpen as a potential starter. Um, we have absolutely no idea who's going to start after Friday night. So I, Peyton Plumley will pitch this weekend. I look for him to give us extended innings. I just don't know if it's going to be as a starting pitcher or out of the bullpen. Do you have an update on Ashcraft? Is um, Ashcraft saw the doctor this morning. Uh, we're wa waiting to hear back uh, results uh, from his MRI, waiting to hear back the results from our team doctor. Um, I don't think it's going to be any type of long, extended um, time that he's going to miss. Uh, but in terms of him being available this weekend, um, I I'm probably thinking he's not going to be available this weekend. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a very long, extended period of time that Graham would be out. Brent continues to just see the ball so <laughs> well. What what are you seeing from him at the plate? Um, well, first of all, um, he was just named National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association Player of the Month, um, and he has earned every accolade that he has gotten so far this year. Um, in my opinion, I think Brent Rooker has been the best player in college baseball the first half of the year, and he's been the best hitter in college baseball the first half of the year. The thing that's so impressive about Brent um, is that he's able to process information so well. Uh, he has a game plan every single time he gets into the box. He's able to make adjustments at bats to at bats, pitch to pitch. Um, he's a very smart hitter. He's able to recognize spin early. He's aggressive in the strike zone. Very rarely do you ever see him chase or expand or try to do too much. Um, he's really embraced the, the, um, the mantra of winning every single at-bat. He's not a guy that's trying to hit the ball out of the park. You can see he's leading the league in doubles. He's at the top with triples. He's leading the league in hits. Um, so it's not a guy that's just 
a one-trick pony where he's trying to hit the ball off the left field foul pole. That's the furthest thing from what he's doing right now. He has grown into a tremendous college hitter where he's using the whole field. He's picking up his base hits. He's not trying to do too much at the plate. And I give him so much credit for all the success that he's having. He is really doing a tremendous job of being a real impact bat for us. And, and he's driving runs in. He's getting runners over. When he gets on base, he's able to steal bases. He is turning into a complete college baseball player. And like I mentioned last night at the end of our interview, I am so glad that Brent Rooker is on this baseball team. Um, he's incredible to coach every day. And for everything that he's doing on the field, he's even better off the field. You're talking about one of the best students on our team. He's a double major guy that's going to graduate this year. Um, just a, a very bright individual that's going to have success uh, in baseball and then long after baseball is over as well. Going back to the bullpen, do you do you think about using the limited – arms you have in longer stints than you have previously do you think about it that way no you know what I, I we've we've gone back and forth with our staff in terms of the best way to use guys and i just think for what we have right now i think the best thing we could do is get guys in to the mound as often as possible in short stints um go out there and, and get us three or four or five outs um don't ask them to go extended time into the ball game you know, let them attack the hitters, let them throw with conviction to where they don't have to try to space out their stuff where they can try to get three or four or five innings. They're able to go out there, attack hitters. If they've got a 90-mile-an-hour fastball with a slider, that's what they do. They don't have to try to, you know, tone it down so they can get four or five innings out of it. It's go get three or four outs, and then we'll see you either the next day or the following day. And because we know at this point, the next guy is going to be ready to go do the same exact thing. Those guys have been ready all year. They stay ready. There's never a moment in the game where I look down there where I see bullpen guys not paying attention, not dialed in, because they know that every day they show up to the field, there's a really good chance that they're going to pitch. They stay prepared. They're ready the entire game, and they've really answered the bell every single time. Um, that their number's been called. Do you think Hunter Stovall gets back this weekend? God, you know, Hunter's going to have another set of treatment today. He's going to see the doctor today. Uh, he's been feeling really good this week, so I think today's practice will be really big for Hunter. Um, he felt really good the other day, uh, pushed it a little bit, and then uh, this was last week when we were at Memphis, felt like he was really getting close to playing, went hard at practice, and then the next day was really sore, so – just clearly wasn't ready to get back out on the field just yet. So today's practice will be big for him because he's been feeling great all week. Uh, hopefully he has a great practice today. Hopefully he feels great tomorrow. Um, if he's available, it will definitely be a great shot in the arm for us in terms of just putting another great player out on the field. Um, and then it allows um, Cody Brown to move around a little bit. And he's done a great job filling in at second base while Hunter has been hurt. Um, and he's been such a um, really big bat for us in the middle of the order. So Cody and I have spent several days talking in terms of what his role is going to be when Hunter comes back. It might be second. It might be third. It might be left. It might be first. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all over the field. But the one thing that I know is he's a mature individual that can play anywhere we ask him to play. His at-bats have been phenomenal. Just that veteran presence in the middle of the order for us where – He's hitting left-on-left left home runs. He's driving balls all over the field, driving in really big runs for us. So I don't know exactly where he's going to play, but I know he's going to be playing somewhere, hitting in the middle of the order for us. You've experienced opening weekend, but you haven't experienced Super Bowl all weekend yet. Right. What's your anticipation right. for that? I'm excited. I can't wait to, to be a part of it. I mean, I think we're probably going to have close to, I don't know, let's just ballpark it, hopefully 15,000 people You know, in the ballpark for three straight days. It's going to be a tremendous atmosphere for college baseball I think it just kind of you know continues to put Mississippi State baseball on the national scene when you can publicize and advertise that you know we just had 15,000 people in the ballpark for three straight days that's something that really gathers national attention and our guys are going to be ready for it our guys are going to be prepared for it we talked last night after the ball game about this upcoming weekend not letting the moment get too big for them the mound's still going to be 60 feet, 6 inches away. The bases are 90 feet. Nobody's moving the fences further or back. Um, it's baseball. 
and we need to do what we have been doing to have success that's taking care of all the little parts and pieces of the game, hitting it, swinging it well, pitching it well, playing defense well, bunting the baseball, moving runners over, hitting the cutoff guy, backing up the right bases. All those kind of things have been going really well for us. And I think you see a, a big difference in our team when we started to play the game at that high of a level, the wins have been coming. So our guys are playing with a lot of confidence right now. They're excited, looking forward to the weekend. Kentucky is an outstanding veteran, older type of baseball team that's been through the battles in this league. Um, and they're going to play well this weekend. So don't look for Kentucky to come in here and be overwhelmed by the crowd or anything. They're playing great. They're going to play great. We just want to be able to come out and match that energy, match that intensity, take care of the baseball game for us. I know we're going to play really well. I'm excited about the weekend. A lot of your guys uh, know and some were recruited by Coach Mengeon and things. Have, sure. Ha, ha, have you heard, has there been any anticipation in the locker room and things just to see him again and to go um, up against I, him? Yeah, I, I don't know if our guys have stayed in contact with him or not, but I know all of our players have the utmost respect for Coach Mengeon. You know, just – he had such a big part in bringing all of these kids here to Mississippi State, and our guys love playing in this program, so I know they're extremely appreciative of the opportunity that Coach brought you know, those guys into their lives to come here to Mississippi State. So I know there's the appreciation standpoint from our players to him. I'm sure they'll shake hands. I'm sure they'll say hellos, that kind of thing. But once the ball game starts, guys, it's nine innings. It's SEC baseball. It's competitive. It's going to be, a, you know, it's just going to be a great atmosphere for baseball and we're excited to go get after it this weekend. Going back to Rooker, it seems like his swing is very efficient this year in particular. Sure. What went into making that change? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing for Brent is just, you know, he stays short, he stays compact. There's a lot of bat speed there. It's not this big, massive, muscled up swing trying to hit the ball out of the park to left field. It's a lot of bat speed. He uses the field. Um, it also helps that he's big and strong and physical and all those kind of things. So I think it's a combination of uh, swing improvement. I think it's a combination of plate discipline, being able to swing at pitches that he can drive and impact rather than just swinging at pitches that he can put in play. Um, he's, been, uh, he's been one of the, the biggest stories in the country so far the first half of the year in terms of what he's doing offensively in this league. Um, he processes information so well. Um, he doesn't try to do too much. I look for him to continue to be a great hitter the rest of the year. That doesn't mean at the end of the year you're going to look up and see him having 25 home runs and hitting 430. And All I expect him to do is be a great hitter every day. He's doing that because he's not trying to do too much. He is become an expert at his swing He's an expert at his game plan, and he's able to do that each and every day. That's why he's having so much success. And his confidence is at an all-time high. How beneficial has Gary been just in getting a scouting report together uh, for Kentucky? On Kentucky? Uh, yeah, it, it's been really good. You know, obviously, Gary recruited all those kids. Gary has a tremendous relationship with all those kids. Gary has seen every kid on that roster play since they were 15 years old. And so, um, you know, it would be crazy to think that you – wouldn't take advantage of the things that Gary has knowing those players and you know but at the same time those kids are a year older than the last time that Gary saw him play and so kids are constantly getting better all the time you know so older kids win in college baseball so we've got a tremendous challenge ahead of us um, and 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 we know they're going to play really well and we'll have to play just as well as those guys to have a chance to win the weekend. Anything different about Pilkington's last two starts? Not that not that I expect him to pitch seven innings every single time right. he throws, but just it seems like he hasn't been able to get deeper into games. Um, the last weekend at, at Ole Miss, I thought, you know, he was just laboring through the fifth inning, and, and I didn't want him to just continue to push his pitch count any higher. Um, I think last weekend Connor could have gone out there and gotten us seven innings, but I felt like five innings was enough. We were down at the time. I just wanted to get the ball into the bullpen's hands limit his pitch count so Connor could come back this week on an extra day's rest because last week was a Thursday series, now it's a Friday series. Give him an extra day's rest, cut down his pitch count, that way he could come back this weekend, Super Bulldog weekend against a great Kentucky team, be fresh, ready to roll.